Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. And today I have another 3D printer to share with you. In this beautiful cardboard box in front of me is the GTEC A10M. This is an entry level 3D printer that has some neat tricks up its sleeves. So I figured for this video, we would unbox it. We'll have a look at what the A10M has to offer. Uh, we'll go through the packaging and everything that it comes with. And then in a future video, uh, I'll spend the next week or so playing around with it to give you guys a full review. So if you have anything that you would like me to try out on this machine, leave them in the comments down below and I'll definitely take a look at that while I review this. Um, but yeah, the printer is called the A10M because it's actually a dual extruder. It has two extruders that feed into a single hot end that can let you mix filament together. So that's where the M come from. This is actually a mixable mixing 3D printer. So you can take two different filament colors and it can print with them individually, or it can actually make a gradient with that. Uh, so the fact that this can do that mixing all for an entry level price is amazing. So let's go ahead and break into this, shall we? So the packaging is really small. Uh, it's actually quite condensely packed and I'm actually really interested in it because I've heard that it's really easy, really quick to assemble. Um, GTEC themselves on their page says that it takes about 10 minutes to put together and it's really just a couple of screws. So it's a mostly assembled printer that almost anyone can put together yourself. So if we open it up, let's take a look. And we have some awesome packaging, foam packaging, as well as some documentation. So we have some assembly instructions nice full colored uh, it kind of walks you through it's actually multiple languages which is really nice so that means that the actual assembly instructions are just a single page front and back and they provide a bunch of different languages so that's cool to see as well as a few other just notes about power supply settings um, and instructions on how to level it so that's nice to see that they included that um, you may recognize the name GTEC because they've been around since 2011, I want to say. They're very well known in the 3D printing world. Um, mostly known for uh, their 3D printers and their 3D printer control boards. So if you've ever updated or upgraded your control board, um, you may have seen GTEC around uh, while you're swapping in your you know, ramps boards or something like that. Uh, we take off the top foam panel here and we see a lot of the, uh, the printer already. Um, so let's go ahead and remove some of the packaging. On this side, we have the uh, LCD controller. Um, so it's one of those standard four row displays. Uh, so it's not a graphical smart controller, um, but it's a very you know, popular style. It, has, it feels nice and heavy. It's already pre-mounted on the little front panel here uh, and has a nice knob that feels pretty good. We also have over here foam covering part of the, uh, the hot end, but we'll get to that later. And then on the very top, we have the first section of the printer, which is actually the bottom units. So this has a heated bed. So the A10M comes with a heated bed. This is a glass bed surface that it prints on. Um, the dimensions of the printer are actually pretty good for an entry level uh, printer. It's uh, 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters by 260 millimeters tall. Uh, so that's about 8.6 by 8.6 by 10.2 inches. Um, so that's a, a pretty good area for an entry level printer. And that entire bottom unit is already pre-assembled. So we have the Y axis with the motor and all of the cabling. The cable has a nice uh, sheath on it. So that's good to see. Um, yeah, we'll just set it over on the side. And then back into the bed, we have the power cable. We also have more foam packaging. And also in the foam packaging is a GTEC print surface. Um, so this will get put onto the glass bed and this gives a nice uh, uh, beginning print surface to print on with. I'm not exactly sure what this material is made out of. Um, so once I find out, I'll, I'll put it in the video itself. 
um, but it looks to have an adhesive back that you stick onto the print surface itself. So that's good to see. And we'll go ahead and take out the rest of the foam. And we can see that there's two, two Bowden uh, tubes coming from the hot end. And that's the trick to how this printer works. So here we go. Here is the top of the printer. So you can see the X axis and the Z axis are already assembled for you. And you can see curiously, like I said, the two Bowden tubes. So this printer has two extruders, so you can push two different types of filament in, but it only has a single hot end. So this hot end is capable of mixing the filaments, so it melts both of them, and you can print with the two filaments at the same time. Um, so you get all of the benefits of a dual extruder, uh, as well as the ability to use their software to mix colors together. So that's a really interesting to see. I can't wait to play around with that. Um, it's your standard uh, Cartesian printer. So it has the bed moving in the Y direction. The hot end itself moves on the X direction. And then the carriage moves up in order for your Z direction. And it has, if I flip this around on the back side, a single stepper motor and lead screw for the Z. So it's only supported from one side there. Um, if we take a look also at the hot end, what they claim is a 360 degree cooling. So they designed it in a way that there's uh, a couple different fans that swirl the air around the hot end uh, to keep things cool, uh, which is cool to see. So we'll see how well that works once it's actually up and printing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what the printer is all about. So you can see that since it's mostly assembled, it should just be a matter of putting the X and Z axis onto the bed, a couple of bolts through the bottom, and we're pretty much good to go. So let me set this down. Should be able to set it just like this. And we'll go through the rest of the things that are remaining in the box so we can get this out of the way. Um, it comes with a mouse pad and a bunch of accessories. So we have a paint scraper that comes with it. Um, we have some zip ties, uh, some cables, some more Bowden tubes. So these are all of the accessories um, that you could want with a 3D printer. All nicely packaged together. We have some of the remaining hardware. So these are the bolts and screws and a couple of the front panel bits. Again, all nicely packaged together, so that's good to see. We will set that over here. We also have a little small bag of more hardware, and it also includes a four gigabyte micro SD card. Uh, so it's good that they include that, that's, that's nice. We have the power supply. So this is kind of your standard power supply uh, that gets mounted to the side of the printer. Um, and yeah. This feels nice, feels solid. Um, I like that it has all of the mounts already on it to attach to the printer. Makes it nice and safe. You're not having to splice in your own power supply cables or you know make your own plug in order to, to plug it in. It has it all integrated into the, the power supply itself. That is good to see. And then we have the two extruders. So these are the extruder motors and the extruder units itself. Like I said, there's two of them. They get mounted on top of the X-axis or on top of the Z-axis supports. So the very top of the printer. And there's two of them because you're feeding two different types of filament through. Um, seems like it's modeled. The extruder itself uh, looks very similar to the E3D Titan, um, which is a pretty popular open source design. So I have a feeling that this is going to work quite well and I'm excited to be able to play around with that. So I'll put the extruders off to the side, and I think that's it for hardware. There are a couple where the extruder was, just a handful of screws and a couple wing nuts for the aluminum extrusions. So the bulk of the printer itself is made from aluminum extrusion, um, black aluminum extrusion, and then it has the Blue is actually just uh, some kind of plastic filler rod that is put inside of the aluminum extrusion to give it that nice 
black and blue uh, aesthetic. So that's good. And so I will just put down the couple of screws that were at the bottom. And I think that's it. Let me just remove the foam. And yes, nothing else. Uh, one more, the very bottom, one more little nut. So we'll see if that's just happened to be outside of one of the bags. Perfect. So let's move this off the table. Here's a closer look at the contents of the A10M. And what I wanted to focus on was the hot end itself. So you can see that this does take in two separate filament feeds, but only has a single 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And so the internals of this hot end is what actually does the mixing. So you can print with just one filament at a time. That's totally possible. You can also print with two colors individually. If you want a nice clean separation, then you can print with a priming tower and it will automatically switch between the filaments as needed. Or you can also print using their mixing mode, which will actually push both colors of filaments at the same time at different ratios to produce different gradients of colors using those. Uh, so I can't wait to play around with this. It's going to be really neat. But this is a beefy looking hot end and I'm excited to see how it turns out. And here's a closer look at the extruder itself. So you can see that this is very much modeled after the E3D Titan uh, with the kind of geared extruder here. The filaments will enter from this side and exits through the Bowden tube on this end with a nice hobbed gear in the sensor there in order to push the filament through. Uh, this is nice and spring-loaded to apply a pretty good amount of tension onto the filaments so that it really can be driven by that hobbed uh, extruder there. So here's a closer look at all of the accessories you get with the A10M. You can see some of the blue uh, plastic that you can put into the aluminum extrusion. It comes with a paint scraper to help you get prints off the bed. It has the Bowden tubes coming from the extruder, some zip ties to help cable management. Uh, it does include a USB cable, so you can plug it into your computer. And they include some sample filaments, uh, in my case, some gray filaments. And it looks like some white filaments as well. So a few different colors, so you can start printing as soon as you get the printer. And a nice little mouse pad, I like that. And a closer look at the mouse pad says that it's uh, advertising their EasyPrint 3D app. So they actually have a smartphone app that you can download and control your printer uh, via your smartphone. The A10M does have some optional accessories. They include, or they have a Wi-Fi module that you can connect to give your printer wireless capabilities. I don't believe that I have that version here. They also sell their 3D touch accessory, which mounts to the hot end and lets you automatically uh, mesh level your bed so you wouldn't have to manually level your bed anymore. So I was mistaken. So it doesn't have a glass bed by default. By default, it has an aluminum bed that has this plastic mylar sheet, again with the adhesive back that sticks to the aluminum bed as your print surface. They optionally have their super glass, glass bed add-on that would replace the plastic sheet with a glass surface. So I think that'll wrap up the unboxing. There actually isn't a whole lot because all of the assembly is done for you already. Uh, so it should just be a couple of bolts to put it together and start printing. Um, so I'm gonna go do that and then spend some time getting to know the printer, playing around with it, and then I will have a follow-up video for this uh, with my full review for the printer. So again, if you have any questions or something that you want me to try out, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to take a look at that. Uh, I want to thank GTech for sending me this printer to try out. Um, I definitely appreciate being able to, you know, get my hands onto a printer in order to share it with all of you guys. So thank you GTech for that. Um, if you want to find out any more information, I'll have links down below where you can find out more information about the A10M itself uh, and more information about GTech if you want to take a look at that. Um, like I said, this is an entry-level 3D printer, and it's priced as such. Um, you can find it for about 250 US dollars. Um, the base price, I think, is 299, but you can often find sales around the $250 range. I've even seen sales down as low as $220, which is insanely low for a 
220 by 220 by 260 uh, millimeter dual extruded printer. Um, there's a lot of features packed in there. Speaking of features, there's a couple others that I didn't mention while I was unboxing. Uh, one of the interesting ones is the ability to resume a print after you've paused it or I think even after a power outage. Um, so it will keep track of where it is during a print and then it will try to resume a print afterwards. Um, so I will definitely want to take a look at that uh, to see if that's actually possible because most of these printers, um, they don't actually use any kind of encoders. They're not a closed loop system, so they're not actually keeping track of where things are. So I'm imagining that it just for in the cases of a power outage where it just instantly loses power, um, but it's probably not designed to be kind of stopped, moved around and then restarted. So I think that pretty much covers it. Thank you guys for watching me unbox the GTEC A10M and it looks like I've got some assembly to do and I'll see you guys at the review. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.